In this video, I will demonstrate how to perform the Kruskal Wallis H test. This test is the nonparametric alternative to the one way between groups analysis of variance and allows us to compare the scores on some continuous uh, numeric variable for three or more groups. Now, it's similar in nature to the Mann Whitney U test, but it allows us to compare more than just two groups, it allows us to compare three or more groups. So, this is considered a between groups analysis. Now, there's a few assumptions that we have when we use this, this technique. And one of the first is that we have a, a random sample of subjects. Uh, the observations are independent of one another. In other words, one subject won't influence the score of another subject. Also, the data can be numeric, but is typically skewed numeric data. Or it could be ranked data, the ordinal scale data. And so in this case, in this example, we have as our grouping variable, we have treatment groups. So these are subjects that have gone through a joint replacement, um, and they're receiving three different types of rehabilitation treatments following the surgery. And so each person is receiving one unique treatment, and we have three different treatments. The subjects were randomly selected and randomly assigned to one of the three treatment groups. Our outcome is a quality of life measure, so it's a numeric measure, but it's skewed. And so here we have a quality of life measure that measures someone's ability to do their activities of daily living, to do their, their function, normal function, um, and it's a numeric scale with a higher score being a higher level of function or a higher level of quality of life. But as I mentioned, we've, we've discovered that the data is skewed, so we can't do a one-way repeated measures ANOVA because that violates one of the assumptions for that technique. So we're going to choose the Kruskal Wallis H test in order to examine group differences on this measure of quality of life. So now that we've determined we've met the assumptions for doing the Kruskal Wallis H test, in order to perform the analysis, we go to the Analyze menu, select Non-Parametric Tests, and then Legacy Dialogues, and then we're going to choose K Independent Samples, which means we have multiple independent samples, more than two. Okay, the first thing we want to do is click on our outcome variable, which is quality of life, and move that into our test variable list box. And then we're going to click on our categorical independent variable and move it, in, and move it into the grouping variable box. And at this point, we need to define the range, in other words, tell SPSS which numbers we're using to code our different groups. And so in this case, the lowest number we're using is 1, and the highest number we're using is 3. And again, these numbers can be arbitrary. You can use any different arrangement you want. But the important thing is you need to indicate which group uh, has the lowest minimum number code and which has the highest. Then we click Continue. And then in the Test Type section, make sure Kruskal Wallis H is checked. Then once that's done, we go ahead and click OK. Now before we examine our output, there's one more thing we need to do, and we need to ask SPSS to produce the median scores for our outcome, because as you probably know, when we're reporting descriptive data on numeric outcomes that are skewed, the mean is not the most appropriate way to describe those. So we want to generate the median score for each of our three groups so we can report that uh, descriptively. So in order to do that, we're going to go back to our Analyze menu, click Analyze and then select Compare Means, and then select the top option, Means. We're going to click on our Outcome Variable and move that into the Dependent List box, and then take our Independent Variable, Treatment Group, and move that into the Independent List box. And we want to click on the Options button, and we want to take uh, Mean and Standard Deviation and move that out of the Cell Statistics box here on the right-hand side. And we want to find median, which is going to be up near the top, and then move that into the cell statistics box. Okay, once we've done that, we go ahead and click OK, or I'm sorry, continue, and then click OK. And then you'll see here on our output, we now have the median score for each of our three groups, so we can report that um, in our results section. Now, in order to interpret our results, the first thing we need to look for uh, are going to be in the test statistics table. 
Okay, and the value we're going to use to determine whether or not we have statistical significance is actually a chi-square value. And in this case, it's 8.665. And the p-value associated with that chi-square value is less than 0.05. It's actually 0.013. So we'd be able to make the conclusion that there are significant differences in the outcome among the three groups. So that the quality of life measures are significantly different among these three groups. And then to kind of examine that, we go down to our median scores and we can see that treatment group A has the highest median score, in other words, the best quality of life relative to treatment group B, relative to treatment group C. So we can make the overall conclusion that the treatment did have an effect on quality of life among the three treatment groups. However, what we don't know is which groups are different from each other at a statistically significant level. So we don't know if group A is different from group B, or different from group C, or whether group B is different from group C. So because we have obtained a statistically significant result overall in the Kruskal-Wallis test, we need to do a uh, post hoc test, a follow-up test. Now some authors will suggest going ahead and doing a another Kruskal-Wallis test for each of our pairwise comparisons. So you would do a Kruskal-Wallis test comparing treatment A group to treatment B, and then A to C, and then B to C. Other authors suggest doing a Mann-Whitney U test between each pair of groups. So we would do a Mann-Whitney U test between A and B and B and C. Now regardless of which technique you're going to choose, we need to perform a Bonferroni adjustment to the alpha values when we do the post hoc testing. So how this would work, what would work is we take the number of pairwise comparisons we're going to do, in this case it would be three, and we divide that into the original p-value we used for our null hypothesis. So if we're using a 0.05 level, and we're going to do three pairwise comparisons, our p-value to test the post hocs would be 0.017 in this case. So in order to then determine if there are significant differences between treatment A and treatment B, for example, we could go ahead and do a man when you test, and then in order to test the significance of that comparison, we would then use the adjusted p-value of 0.017. Now we can also calculate effect sizes for this comparison. For the, for the overall level of the significance for the Kruskal Wallace as well as for the post hocs. And how we do this is we take the chi-square value that we were we produced at the beginning of the test, the chi-square value in this case it's 8.665, and then we would divide that by the square root of the total sample size, in other words large n, so however many total number of subjects we had, we would take that value, take the square root of it, and then divide that into our chi-square value. And that would then give us our effect size for, for this uh, Kruskal Wallace test. Now the criteria we would use to determine the, the size of the effect, uh, according to Cohen, is a 0.1 would be considered a small effect, a 0.3 would be considered a medium effect, and a 0.5 or greater would be considered a large effect. So to summarize, we learn how to do a between groups analysis of three or more groups when we have a ordinal scale outcome or a skewed numeric outcome. We then talked about performing post hocs if we have statistical significance of the, the omnibus or the, the initial analysis. And then the post hocs could be done either repeat by repeating Kruskal Wallace for each of our pairs or by doing a May Whitney U test. And we also talked about how to create or calculate an effect size statistic um, for these comparisons as well. So hopefully you uh, learned something in this video and good luck using this technique in your own research.